Hi, this is Scott Vaughn. I'm going to do some examples of writing functions as infinite series and one example of doing um, determining the radius and interval convergence of a power series. Um, then I'll come back and do some more. I'll do another video with more examples of radius and interval of convergence. So question one, use the geometric series to derive a power series for the function f of x equal 1 over 1 minus x and what is the radius of convergence for this power series? So we'll start off with the formula for a geometric series that converges and it has this form. A is the first term and R is the common ratio and it's converging only if and only if that uh, R value is less than 1 in absolute value. So we could just turn that directly into um, a function where instead of using R we just use the variable X and we'll just make the A uh, equal to 1. So if a is 1 and r is equal to x, we just write it this way and we have an infinite series. It's a power series. It's a power series because it has this form where you have powers of x in the infinite series. And this function is equal to that infinite power series if and only if the absolute value of x is less than 1. That comes directly from the geometric series. And that means that the radius of convergence is 1. And it, and another thing that I would say about that is that when you look at this um, values for which the function converges, it's all the values between minus 1 and 1. You can see that it's centered at 0 and it's um, all values with a radius of 1 from that value of 0. And uh, we can actually visualize that in the graph. So here I'm in Desmos and I'm going to type in that 1 over 1 minus x and compare it with the infinite series. But you can't really put infinity in here, so we'll just use a big number like 100 and see what happens with that and kind of experiment around with it. So it's x to the n, because I have 1 over 1 minus x is x to the n. I think it's taken a little while. There it goes. So you can see that it's a good match between minus 1 and 1 in that interval from minus 1 to 1, but not perfect here because, of course, I don't have the value big enough. Let's see if we can increase it, what happens. We can actually see that increasing the number of terms makes it a better and better approximation. But actually, it doesn't converge at minus 1. It converges all the way up to minus 1, but not at minus 1. So that's the answer, and uh, the radius of convergence is 1. So we've written this function now, this function, as a power series. But it's only, that's a key thing about power series, is there's some associated interval of convergence that where it's valid. So let's take a look at the next one. We've got here uh, 1 over 1 plus x squared, and we can just build on that work that we just did by rewriting it in this form, 1 over 1 minus x, where now my x is this 1 minus x squared. What was x before is now minus x squared. Right? So that minus x squared gets replaced where we have x in the previous result, like that. Right? And now I'm going to simplify it. And because I used the geometric series, it's only when this quantity that is this argument here of this of this function, this minus x squared, it's only valid when this r value is less than 1. And in this case, r is this minus x squared, so it's only when the minus x squared quantity is less than 1. Now, if you take an absolute value of minus x squared, that's the same as just the absolute value of x squared. In fact, you could even drop the absolute value and just say when x squared is less than 1, uh, which is when you're in the interval from minus 1 to 1, not including the boundaries. So all the values from minus 1 to 1. So again, the radius is 1. So this one says to integrate the power series that we just developed to derive a power series for the function tan inverse. And what's the radius of convergence for this power series? And write the first four terms of that power series. OK, so the result that I'm going to use 
is that the antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared is tan inverse plus c. And here, here we can just write in that power series for 1 over 1 plus x squared that we just derived, but this is specifically only for the interval minus 1 to 1. And what's going to happen here is I'm just going to integrate, uh, and, and this, is, this, this is just incredible, right, that you can actually integrate this infinite series, but that's like one of the things that's easy to miss about why this is so important. Even though it looks kind of complicated, it isn't really complicated. It's all these even powers um, of x, and the integration is with respect to x, which means the n is constant in the integration, which means you're just doing the power rule. So you simply add 1. You get 2n plus 1. And then you divide by 2n plus 1, as you would with the power rule. So I'm going to integrate term by term. Uh, and actually, it's, it's surprisingly easy. So that's just, and of course, the negative 1 to the n, this is also a constant in the integration. So it's the same in every term. It's not constant term to term. It's a, it's a plus 1, then a minus 1, and a plus 1, and a minus 1. But it's constant with respect to x. It doesn't change with respect to x. So it is a constant in each term. It's kind of funny. I almost want to say it's constantly different. It's constantly 1, and then minus 1, and minus 1. But that doesn't matter when you integrate with respect to x. It's either 1 or minus 1 in each and every term. So you just copy it as you would any other constant. The negative 1 to the n is constant with respect to x, is what I'm saying. So I am now integrating this term by term, and that's where this comes from. And as you integrate, you get a plus c. So what's happening here is I would say this has to be true for any value of x. And so I'll pick a convenient value of x. Well, it has to be true for any value of x in the interval of convergence, which is the minus 1 to 1. So we pick some x value between minus 1 and 1, like 0, where it must be true when you plug in 0. And so if I plug in 0 for x on both sides, this guy is going to be 0. And this guy, tan inverse of 0, that's 0. So I'm looking at the tan inverse of 0, which is 0. So on the left side, I'm just going to get, yeah. So if x is 0, on the left side, we get 0 plus c. So we just get c. And on the right side, every term is 0. And so this is not necessarily the same constant. But when I realize that this all goes to 0, then they have to be the same constant. And that's how I can cancel them out. So now I have an infinite series for tan inverse only valid, though, between minus 1 and 1. Because what happened is I integrated this um, power series, which had a radius of 1. And when you integrate and differentiate power series, it doesn't change the radius. It might change the interval. The difference there is the interval is counting whether or not whether you include the endpoints or not. So the interval you're distinguishing from the radius by checking the endpoints. And I haven't done that yet, but uh, we're we'll about to do that. But anyway, the radius, when you integrate a power series, the radius doesn't change. If you integrate or differentiate, the radius doesn't change. So because the radius was 1 in this function here, and I integrate it, it's still the same radius. And it's centered at 0 because we're looking at the interval from minus 1 to 1. And so now what I want to do is I want to check those endpoints. It didn't actually ask. It just said, what's the radius of convergence? But I'm curious now. We can actually develop and establish the interval of convergence. And you do that by checking the endpoints. So I'll check x equal 1 first. And I'll plug that into this function here. And when I plug in 1, that's 1 to the power 2n plus 1. That stays 1. So you have this infinite series, which will converge, right? Because it's a, um, you can check that by the alternating series test. So then we check the other endpoint, which is negative 1. So you say, well, what if x is negative 1? And you plug it right back into the same infinite series. So I'm plugging in x is negative 1 there. Now, the tricky thing that's happening right here is I'm thinking, OK, I have negative 1 to an odd power which would always be negative 1. And so what I'll do is I'll just say negative 1 times negative 1 to the n to the n power is just going to be negative 1 to the n plus 1 power. 
So you're just getting a negative 1 here every time. I could have simplified this to say it's negative 1. That's why I get negative 1 to the n plus 1. Also an alternating series also converges. The conclusion is it converges at both endpoints and therefore the interval is minus 1 to 1 inclusive. Now I've established that tan inverse at least it is um, tan inverse is written as an infinite series but valid only on that interval from minus 1 to 1 inclusive. It doesn't, so in other words it isn't this infinite series for every x but only on those x's uh, that are between minus 1 and 1 inclusive. So if we, if the question asks for the first no, four non-zero terms, there are first four terms. And so we could just type in those four terms, or we could type in, you know, with sigma notation and Desmos and, and compare. So that's, that's a good approximation for x's uh, on that interval, minus one to one. So here's tan inverse. And I'm going to write it in sigma notation and just say, let's go to 50. So it's alternating series with uh, odd powers. I had to get those parentheses there, uh, otherwise I was having trouble typing it in. So um, that could be an issue if you're trying to type this in. And you can see that the infinite series is a good match for that curve. Um, yeah, on the interval from minus one to one, including at minus one and minus one and one. So here I'm going to try it with a slider so I can get. Uh, more and more terms and see how good the approximations are. That's an approximation here for tan inverse and an exact value for tan inverse specifically on the interval, you know, right, there's the, com I gotta make sure that's only true for x is between minus 1 and 1 or when your x is less than 1, less than or equal to 1 in absolute value, it's exactly equal if you say plus dot dot forever, uh, but that's all of it specifically on the interval from minus 1 to 1. Okay, let's do this last one here. Uh, this is use the ratio test to determine the radius and interval of convergence of the given power series. So from 1 to infinity of x minus 4 to a power n over n. And uh, yeah, we use ratio test a lot for finding intervals of convergence and radius of convergence uh, whenever we're working with power series because we have these powers. Uh, that simplified nicely um, in in the ratio test. So the ratio test takes a limit to infinity of the n plus one term divided by the nth term in absolute value. So here's my n plus one term, and I'll take the n term there, and just instead of dividing, I'll just multiply by the reciprocal. And then, yep, that's an n power. And now we want to simplify that. And one thing that I, I like to think about here is that if you're taking an absolute value of the whole thing, all we need to do here with respect to the absolute values is look at those quantities that could be negative and put the absolute value on those. When it comes to multiplication and division, it would be the same algebraically if you just took all of those potentially negative values and made them positive. So that's what I'm doing. I'm taking the absolute value straight to this. It's like kind of like a belt that's getting tightened down to those quantities that might be negative, just like that. And we have this factor n over n plus 1 that I know that goes to 1. So, the, of course, there's n factors of x minus 4 on the bottom and n plus 1 factors on top. So, well, I'd be left with one factor of x minus 4. And that n over n plus 1, that goes to 1. So, the whole thing goes to just the quantity x minus 4 in absolute value. This could be bigger than 1, depends on the value of x. If x was 10, then the uh, series will diverge. If x is 5, uh, actually, from the ratio test, if x is 5, you don't have a conclusion, right? So specifically in the ratio test, you have to have the limit less than 1 to have convergence. So that's what we can do now with the ratio test is to say when is this quantity less than 1 and only for x values where it's less than 1 will we have convergence of this in, of this infinite series. So we just take that x minus um, 4 in absolute value and find out algebraically when that's less than 1 which is actually you could just say all the values that are one unit from 4 within one unit of four, so that's three to five. 
and I can get the radius right off of this value here because I'm thinking, okay, it's all points, all x values whose distance, you could think of that absolute value as the distance between x and 4. So if the distance is less than 1, so all values whose distance from 4 is less than 1. In other words, everything from 3 to 5. So centered at 4 with a radius of 1. Another thing is sometimes, we, yeah, we say a is 4, we might say x is 4. Uh, you can use that interchangeably because the a value is actually an x value. I know that can be a little confusing there, but it's centered at an x value of 4, and often in the, form, the forms that we identify uh, power series, that, a, that 4 could have been what you might have called a. Um, so both are correct. So there's, it's centered at 4 and has a radius of 1. So everything from 3 to 5. So now for the interval, because um, that is typical to ask not just the radius, but also what is the interval of conversion. So in, in order to, see the reason we have to do that separate is because the ratio test will not answer at the endpoints, because exactly at the endpoints, uh, that's when the limit is 1, and there's no conclusion from the ratio test. So we have to separately and independently establish the convergence at the endpoints because, um, yeah, we can't get it with ratio tests. So let's plug in 3 in the original series and plug in 5 and check for convergence as if it was a new problem. It doesn't have any x's anymore. It just has n's, and you just, you just see whatever might be appropriate. So if you're testing x equal 3 in that given series, right there, I'm plugging in x is 3. So that is an alternating series that will converge. And if you test 5, Let's see what conclusion. Oh yeah, I'm realizing that I was putting n equals 0 and that wouldn't work. You can't have 0 there. So I fixed that. I have to start at 1. So actually this one, if you plug in 5, you get 5 minus 4. That's 1 to the power n will remain 1. Obviously that is the harmonic series and diverges. And so now we have a conclusion about what happens to this particular series, specifically when x is 5. When x is 5, it reduces to this series, which we know about that one. It's divergent. So now we have our final, our final result. Everything from 3 to 5, including the 3, but not the 5. OK, so that's the end of this video. Uh, I was trying out a different style here. Um, maybe it's working. Uh, let's see. Give it another try. OK, I hope it's been helpful, and thank you for watching.